Warhammer has got too expensive for me. 2,000 points of Space Marines can cost $700. I don't know about you, but that $700 would be better off in my pocket. So a year and a half ago, I taught myself how to 3D print, and by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to 3D print your first Space Marine. You're gonna need a few things before you begin, especially if you wanna follow along with this video while I support and prepare the model. Now, I use Lychee Slicer for my supports, but I also use a program called Photon File Validator. I'll get into that later on in the video. First things first, we need the file, and I do need to give a big thanks to Cheat Dubs at this moment. Because of their aggressive takedowns and overzealous protection of their IP, we're able to get these Space Marine files for free. So it makes the savings even bigger when 3D printing them instead of buying them. So to get the file, I'll open up Cults 3D and type Space Marine into the search bar and start looking through all of the different options. There is bound to be something good from over 10,000 hits. After you find the Space Marine file that you like, you're more than likely gonna have to support it yourself. And like I said earlier, Games Workshop are really protective of their IP and it means that we can get the files for free. But that also means that creators have little to no incentive of offering a pre-supported version. Pre-supports are great for everyone from beginners to advanced users, but even if it's done by the best pre-supporters out there, there's no guarantee it's gonna work on your machine. Because of all the different variables that you have to take in, it's still best to learn to support yourself. Open up Lychee and change your 3D printer to any cubic photon, regardless of what printer you actually have. Now, I'll explain why in a moment, and it will make sense, but before I do, drag your first file in. I'm going to start with the body, first of all. Lychee has a big advantage over the other slicers with their magic button. But before you click that button, I need to let you know I'm not an expert on supporting models. Now, there are plenty of people out there on YouTube that are, they have tons of great tutorials out there. So if you really want to go down that rabbit hole after the video, feel free to do so. But this is by far the quickest way that I find to support my models. So before you press the magic button, I like to take auto orientation off. Although slicers are getting smarter, they still orientate models in terrible ways. The best way to orientate your model is to use the rotate tool and lean the model back between 15 and 40 degrees. Having your models like this lowers the suction force on the model while prints, which means the chances of success are greater. Before we press the button, we need to pick the strength of the supports. So you have three options, light, medium, and heavy. Professional pre-supporters tend to use light as a maturity, I use medium because if I use light, the chances of failure skyrocket for me personally. You also want to change the settings on the supports as well. I have my mediums at a tip diameter, 0.35 millimeter, length 3 millimeter, diameter 1.5 millimeter, and the penetration at 0.2 millimeter. The light is 0.15 tip diameter and one millimeter diameter, and heavy is 0.5 millimeter tip diameter, 2.29 millimeter diameter. I don't know why it's 2.29 millimeter. I don't know if I've made a mistake there, but that's what I've had saved for so long, so that's what I use. Okay, I've kept you waiting long enough. Now we can press the magic button and let it do most of the work on the supports for us. After it completes, I actually like to go in and add in a few more supports just on areas that I think might fail. So these will be areas that are like long and flat. So the undersides of arms, legs. I also add in extra supports onto the feet, the places that are gonna be getting the most suction force. So the first point of contact between the plate and the model. After I've added in my extra supports, I like to use the other benefit of light sheet, which is the island detection. I have Lychee Pro, so I can use real-time island detection, but the free version has detailed, which is more than enough. The Pro version just picks up a few more, I find, and that saves me a bit of time on the next step in my process. But before we move on, you need to move over to export and export the file as a Photon file. Keep Lychee open in the background because we'll come back to it later. If you remember at the start, I said you'll need a program called Photon File Validator. So this little program reads Photon Files and actually picks up some stray islands that could have been missed by Lychee. So open the file and the program searches through each layer for any islands that might have been missed by the auto supports. Once it's complete, we need to press the fix button as most of these are actually false positives. Now we have all of the layers that have islands missing. I go through them one by one and use this window to cross-reference with Lychee. The Photon File Validator program shows you the layer with the island and the exact location. So this island is on layer 319 and it's roughly here. So over on Lychee, I'll use my up and down arrow keys to get to the exact island. And what I tend to do is increase and decrease the layers by two or three 
because then you can actually see the island developing. Once I support an island, I personally like to look through the next 10 or so layers to see if there are any more popping up that might not have been picked up by either program. You may notice that I over support some parts of the model. At the end of the day, I would rather use more resin on supports than have failures. Now, after all the islands are supported, I go back to the Lychee magic button and untick auto supports and press it again. This rebraces and optimizes the supports with all of the new ones added. Now that the supports are optimized, I save my file as an STL, usually with supported after the name. You can slice straight from Lychee, but be sure to change your printer to the one that you're using to make sure it works because my Saturn only reads CTB files. This is where my way is different though, because I actually have issues whenever I slice through Lychee. So I actually tend to grab that STL file and bring it over to shit 2 box and slice it in there. Normally I would load up the plate and print as much as possible because even if you print one piece or a full plate, it's still gonna bring the same amount of stress on your screen. In your printer, your screen is the most likely to be replaced out of the major parts. They are rated for something like 2000 hours, so you might as well get as many full plates out of your screen in its lifetime. Press slice and once that's done, drag your new file over to a USB drive for the printer. Plug in your USB drive, select your file, and now we just have to sit back, let it print and wait. And while it's printing, if you're looking for more people to talk about 3D printing, then you should join my Patreon or become a YouTube member and hop onto the Discord because we have a huge collective knowledge on printing Warhammer models. I just want to thank all of our new Patreons. With your support, I'm able to keep making videos. So that's a lot of names. Thank you all so much. Now that the model is finished printing, it's time to clean and cure it. So first of all, what I do is after I take it off the plate, I put it into my container filled with isopropyl alcohol and I let it sit in there for about two to three minutes normally. If you have water washable resin, then your process is obviously gonna be different because you'll be using water. But even whenever I had water washable resin, I still used isopropyl alcohol because it is the best at cleaning. After you take your pieces out of the IPA, it's now time to take off the supports. So I'm gonna use the hot water method now, which is where you basically put your model into a container or a bowl full of hot water. And then it means that whenever you take off those supports, it should come off a lot easier. Normally what I would do is just go ahead and just peel the supports off just as they come out. Sometimes that can cause breakages, especially if parts are really delicate. So for those bits, I would normally use clippers. Obviously you can use either the hot water method or you could use the way I used to do it. I let my models try normally for a few hours because if it's still wet and you go to cure it, it can cause this like weird white stuff to form on it, similar to what this model has here. I just let them try on the mat beside the printer while I'm either printing off another batch of models or just doing other things in life. After they are fully tried, it's now time to cure them. So there's a multiple different options you can choose here. I've used a nail lamp and a DIY curing box, which is basically just a box full of aluminum tape and a UV light on top, or you could go for a wash and cure system, or even if you're lucky, you could use the sun. For my UV light that I use, I tend to find that one minute each side, so two minutes in total, works perfectly fine. Now, you don't want to over cure the model because then it causes the resin to become very brittle. For building your resin models, super glue is your best friend, and the one that I use is the Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. I find that it works the best because you just do a little blob and it sets extremely fast, which means I'm not having to sit there for ages holding pieces together. I find that 3D printed models are a lot easier to build because there's no mold lines. They're a lot easier to paint because there's not as many little details that aren't necessary and they're a lot cheaper than their plastic counterparts. Now that you have your first space frame printed, you're probably asking yourself, well, how much would it cost to 3D print an entire army? Well, lucky for you, I made a video and it's for 3D printing an Imperial Knights Army, which I saved over $500 and you should watch it next. 